This is an old 3.0 Duramax diesel coolant control valve torn down. I did find the point of failure right here. We're gonna get into that, but I also have a brand new coolant control valve in this box. So we're gonna go ahead and see if there is any difference between that one and this one. So I'm going to just save you 10 minutes of teardown and look at this insanity right here. Pretty much the way that this works is you have these different motors on the end of each of the valves. And so that's going to rotate these within the valve itself. And then these openings inside, that's where coolant's going to flow. When it rotates and closes, that's where the coolant is not going to be able to flow. And that controls the coolant flowing to and from the valve. And that's going to allow it to operate as a thermostat. This is just a big giant fancy thermostat. So this directs coolant all over the engine to different places in order to meet all the temperature requirements that it needs at specific areas. So the failure points on this coolant control valve, it's actually kind of minimal. I've minimized it to one motor, I believe, is the problem motor. And I say it's this one motor because what it has is, excuse that, this little worm gear right here, and you can see the grease right there. That's how it starts off with. I'm assuming, again, we're gonna open up a brand new one. These are hard to come by. I feel a little guilty for taking apart a brand new one, but you know, for science, let's do it. Back to the failure point. Inside this motor itself is actually buildup of grease and plastic. Look at that gear. I don't know if it's supposed to be flat like that or if that's just worn away. We're gonna find out when we go ahead and tear apart the new one, but I'm not going to tear apart the new one this deep because I'd like to kind of keep this one usable. So we're just gonna tear it down just enough to see this worm gear itself because I believe this is the ultimate issue. Now I did read on the internet because there are some smart people on the internet and they try things before I do. And so I learned from them and I'm gonna share their experience as well. But basically they took theirs apart, greased it up inside, put it back together and everything was good and hunky dory. However, in my case, I don't know if I would be able to do that because there's so much plastic dust built up in there. And yes, that is a mix of grease and plastic dust. So let's go and set this aside and we're going to unbox this brand new one, get the valve out here, and then I will take apart this motor and this motor only because I don't think there's an issue with these other ones. Yes, they do have some grease inside there, but this whole setup is a very robust setup. I don't see anywhere on any of these. I don't see anywhere that would cause binding or sticking. These motors are pretty solid and they're pretty strong. So it's going to overcome any bit of binding inside here, I believe. So I don't think the binding issue is within the valve. I don't think it's these motors. I don't think it's this other motor. I think it's right here, this one in the worm gear. Let's get into the brand new one. All right, what do you think? Did you think I was kidding? Got a brand new one right here, fresh out of the box. You could see that motor that I was talking about with the worm gear inside is actually this one right here. And like I said, I'm not gonna tear apart everything else. It's all just super basic stuff. And uh, it's just, it all rotates. That's not going to be the issue. The issue is going to be within, at least in my case, and everything else that I've seen on the internet, it comes down to this worm gear and the buildup. Look at, look at that. Let's see if I can get that in focus. You can see the buildup inside there. Yes, that is grease. I don't know if the grease is actually breaking down, but I do know the gear is wearing. This gear potentially should just be a metal gear, maybe more metal inside here and that would make this more robust. Did they do those changes inside? I highly doubt, I bet this is identical. In fact, let's just check some part numbers on it just for giggles here. All right, so we've got uh, 0900 ends right there. Yep, look at that, 61, 1520. Yeah, exact same part numbers. That is unfortunate. That tells me that there is no change within here. Let's see how this gear starts out. Let's see what kind of grease is inside there, how well it's greased up. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to be careful to pop off these clips. I already injured my little finger on the earlier one. So we're going to pop these off and see what we got. Now I'm going real gentle on these because I do want to reuse this if possible. Just can get that one over the hump right there. We got it. All right, last one. I put my thumb behind it because I'm trying to capture it. I don't want it flinging across the garage here. Okay, let's see. Will it be better if I spun this like this? Sure would. All right. Let's 
go ahead and just gently pry up on this. It's coming right off. Lift up nice and slow. All right, so we can see circuit board. Let's compare it to the other one that I misplaced just to see what time does to the circuit board. See if there's anything that you guys notice that I don't. All right, so this is the old one right here. All right, so what do you think? Do you see anything different inside there? Let me know in the comments. I'll try to kind of turn it a little bit. Let's go ahead and set this back down. We got our comparisons there that we needed and we can see this gear right here. It is flat still. It does show grease throughout. That is still plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cover. I'll be real careful about that. All right, and we can see the grease on, grab the old plate. I know I kind of carved at it a little bit. You can see the difference. You can see the grease break down from the old one and then all the plastic residue versus the new one there. Big difference, but you can see the wear on that. So let's go ahead and set this back down. And now here is our old gear, the failed gear. You can see not much grease left in there, so that is an issue. Pretty much what I would assume is once the grease starts to go away. I mean, let me see if I can touch the screen. How about that? Did that help? I hope it did. You can see the buildup inside this worm gear, and that's riding on another plastic worm gear. So you have plastic on plastic. Whether or not metal on metal would be better, I would think so. But I'm not going to pull that one out because we can see inside. We know the fail point. We can see that they do include grease. Very little amount of grease. Maybe it needs a little bit more. I don't know. If you get a new one, are you going to want to put some more grease in there? I kind of think that might be a good idea. But I'm not going to be certain. I'm not going to be too certain on that. So that's what we got. Hopefully this helps people uh, understand how this coolant control valve works and what the fa failure is and whether or not you want to fix it. I would suggest if you have a failure, just replace it. But then it's up to you if you want to add more grease to this to maybe prolong the life of it. Hopefully this clears some things up. Let me know what you think about it, if we should continue doing more videos like this in the future. Till next time, see ya. You can see how it functions. The motor will turn it and that will allow coolant to flow through there. Motor will turn it there and allow coolant to flow through there.